Hello, this is Moon and I would like to talk about EVA 3KS. I want to show specifically three things. First, how I disassemble it, because I have a method that I haven't seen anywhere before. Um, secondly, I will show how to differentiate or how to distinguish uh, unmastered and master sliders and I will show how to assemble it back again because there are some pitfalls if you are not careful enough. So let's get started. First, um, I am showing it for Euro cylinders. Um, they have those nasty pentalope screws there are some older versions as well that use a normal flathead, but it's not that common. The modern ones are using pentalopes. There are special bits available for it that looks exactly like the screw. And the first thing to do is to remove the module from this cylinder. There are some things inside to make the key work with the cam. And there are sometimes those extensions to have it at specific lengths. They are always fixed by normal flathead screw, as far as I'm aware. So when we remove that, we then have this nasty springs. I have also seen a little bit different ones and some can be removed quite easily with um, kind of sick lip removers, but these are a bit tricky. And the way it works best for me is using pliers. I just stick them in here and pull it apart and Take it off that easily. Then you actually don't need the key to disassemble it. Um, but sometimes it slides out just like that. But interestingly, when you insert a key, you are unable to pull it out because the sliders stick out both sides in the core and just don't allow the removal. So now after I remove the key, well, this time we are lucky so it does work, but it doesn't work every time. So here is what I figured. So uh, the core has two sidebars on left and right, one key control sidebar, and on the top there is just this kind of um, I don't know, roller or something. I'm not sure how to call it thingy. But if there are no sliders sticking out that way, we can insert shim in there. So what I do is I take a pick and shift the sliders to the bottom. Then I take the shim and insert it from this side. It sometimes catches on the ridges that are inside there, but usually it's fixable, so you can just force it in. Then, when that is done, now the sliders are sticking out, since we pushed them that way, they are sticking out of the core and blocking from below. But they cannot stick in that direction now, because we have a shim in there. So we can take a pick again, and force all the sliders to the shim. And sometimes needs some. Oh, I see there, are, there is a slider at the back that prevents it from moving. You might see it right there. So one more try. Now it's down. And now it should. 
slide out. And that works nicely with both keyed and keyless ones. Yeah, come on. I don't know why it doesn't want right now, but come on. I think the shim was making it a bit tight. So here it's out. Now there are great videos that explain how the lock works and how to pick it. But what I want to show you here is that the sidebar grooves are different. So we have different types of sidebars. We have a passive key control sidebar like that. And let me just quickly stick the key not to lose the sliders in. So now they are held by the key and cannot go anywhere, just the sidebars can. Uh, there are different grooves. So that one does not correspond to any sidebar, just, just there, no idea, maybe catches sidebars just a little when you turn or something. Then two on the sides, they interact with these like that. And then there is a, where is it? No, I lost it already. This key control sidebar that just matches with the profile. If there is a right key inserted, it will go in. Otherwise, it will stick out and not allow your core to turn. And that goes on this side. So if you look closely, the side bars are not exactly the same. The sidebars, they have this kind of chamfer, or I don't know what to call it, how we can see. So this edge and that edge are a bit different. And it is done in order to align the grooves in the core, which are symmetrical, as far as I can tell. And the grooves in the core, which if you look, they're shifted a bit to one side. So that needs the, the sidebars to be in this form. And that also needs um, some care when you put them back, but I will show it later. Now let's finish this assembly and I will show you the sliders. The sink was gutting it. The hardest part probably is keeping track of which slider goes where. Everything else is relatively straightforward. And now the tricky part is to keep the sliders from sliding out while you turn it. Nothing else is in the core, it is gutted. 
And here are the sliders. So you see some of them have one false gate and two true gates. That actually not a mastering. That is due to the fact that the sidebars have two ridges and in order to be to retract it, those two ridges need to match with two grooves. Now for the mastering, we need more than two grooves. And if you see, there are two ways of doing that. One is making just one wide cut that allows this slider to match with the sidebar in multiple positions. So you see it kind of have a play. And another option is having three deep cuts that would allow matching it with the sidebar like this and like that. So in this specific case, there are four mustard sliders. This one, this one, that one, and that one. And as other videos explain, there are different types of sliders. Some are with two um, pins and some with one pin. And that corresponds to this single deep track or two more shallow tracks. So now let's put it back together and for that first we need to insert the sliders where they belong to. attention putting them to the positions where they came from. Now, just like I would check in a pin tumbler that the pins are in their right positions, I insert the key here. And what I want to see is that the two grooves are straight. And this middle knob is in the middle as supposed. If some of the sliders is inserted the wrong way, this middle knob would be elsewhere and you would not see this alignment and the sidebar would not be able to retract. So this time it looks good. The only sliders that look differently are the ones that are mastered. Um, I would insert this passive one, this is the last. Now I want to show something with those. Um, you really have to pay attention putting them inside the right way because if you put them the wrong way, then <clears throat> there is a chance you still will be able to force the core in, but it will be quite tight and you will not be able to um, operate the lock or disassembly the next time would be quite hard. So I think this time 
I did put it right way. So you see here is the groove for the passive sidebar and the cutaway things that let me show it again once more. So the sidebars are not, let me think how to show it nicely. There is a kind of cut on this side, which is not um, available on that side. So here is kind of 90 degrees and here is chamfered, which makes the face of the sidebar, which interacts with the groove in the core, be shifted a bit down. And that needs to correspond with the grooves. So when I insert it, I usually take the key out and align the sliders a little, just so that they don't stick out. Hold them with the sidebar and press in. And I will put the passive one later. I just want to show that when you insert it the right way, I'm not sure why this one is a bit tight. That's okay. Now it's fast. When you insert it a little, it should move. It should give you some space. If, however, you insert the sidebars the other way around, So now it's wrong. And now if you insert it, still uh, this first bit is tight on this one, you still kind of can insert it, but now it does not move. The only thing that is moving now is my hand. It's not the core in the uh, housing. You would be able to push it in, but it will not operate. So. Let's take it out again. Let's put the sliders right way in. Uh, not sliders, sidebars. Let's put the passive sidebar and for that I will insert a key to see that I put it in the right way. So here is the bit longer ledge. So I have to turn it around like this. Put it in and I see that it aligns nicely. Take the key out Hold the sliders with the finger, hold them with the sidebars, and insert it back. Take the clip and Put the clip on the core. Works just like it. Now I insert, I attach that piece back. that one. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes it is important whether we put it this way or that way in order for the cam to operate, but it looks like it was like this. That's exactly what I will do. Oh, I didn't touch this part, so I will just align with it. Insert it back, 
that one. That one. That side works. That side works. Hope it helps someone. Thank you for watching.